Hey yo, welcome to Astronaut. It's good to see you here. Well, I can't actually see you, but I'm glad you're here anyways. Today is the first video in a series about optics. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the different ways that light behaves, specifically focusing on reflection and refraction, but we're also talking about some of the other ways that light behaves, like diffraction, absorption, all of that. So with that, let's get started. First off, what is optics? Optics is the study of light, and usually when we're talking about optics, we're talking about visible light, and the way it interacts with matter. When a light wave encounters the surface, there are a few different ways it might behave. Reflection, transmission, refraction, absorption, diffraction, and scattering. All of these terms are just ways of saying that light interacts with the surface in a specific way depending on what material it encounters. So first up, reflection. Reflection occurs when light bounces off of the surface it hits. The light approaches a surface at an angle of incidence. Now, incidence just refers to the incoming angle and bounces off the surface at an angle of reflection. On a smooth surface, like a mirror, the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. This is known as the law of reflection. So if a light ray approaches a mirror at an angle of 20 degrees, the angle of reflection will also be 20 degrees. Easy enough, right? So let's complicate it a bit. What if instead of just having one mirror, we have three? I position them perpendicularly to one another like so. If I point a laser at the first mirror so that it forms an angle of 31 degrees with the first mirror, at what angle will it reflect off of the third mirror? Well, if the incident angle on the first mirror is 31 degrees, the angle of reflection will also be 31 degrees. Now, the light beam forms a right triangle with the second mirror. Since all the angles of a triangle have to equal 180 degrees, we can calculate that the incident angle on the second mirror is 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 31 degrees, which is just 59 degrees. If the incident angle on the second mirror is 59 degrees, the angle of reflection will also be 59 degrees. Yet again, we have a right triangle formed between the laser beam, the second mirror, and the third mirror. We can calculate the incident angle on the third mirror to be 31 degrees, which of course means that the angle of reflection will also be 31 degrees. So that's it. That's our answer, 31 degrees. Okay, transmission and refraction. I'm going to be grouping these two together because they're related. So transmission describes light passing through a medium. If the light encounters a new medium, it will change direction. Refraction describes the bending of light as it passes from one medium to another, like air into water. More specifically, as light passes from one medium to a denser medium, it will bend towards the normal. That is the line that is perpendicular to the surface. Each medium has a refractive index, which we usually represent with an N. The refractive index is equal to the velocity of light C in a vacuum compared to the velocity in a medium. The law of refraction, which we also call Snell's law, states that N1 times sine of the first angle is equal to N2 times sine of the second angle. So let's do an example. If light passes from air to water and travels through the water at an angle of 30 degrees, at what angle did it pass through the air? The refractive index of air is nearly 1. The refractive index of water is 1.33. 1.33 times sine of 30 degrees is 0 0.665. Taking the inverse of the sine of 0 0.665, we find that the angle is 41.68 degrees. So we can say that the angle at which the light traveled through the air was 41.68 degrees. Next up, absorption. Absorption is the process of light energy being converted into heat. Electrons of an atom vibrate at a specific frequency, called the natural frequency. If the frequency of a light wave is similar to the natural frequency of the electrons, the electrons will absorb the energy of the light wave and turn it into vibrational energy. When the frequency of a light wave does not match the natural frequency of the electrons, reflection or transmission will occur instead. If the object is transparent, the light will be transmitted. The vibrations of the electrons will be passed along to neighboring atoms. If it is opaque, the light will be reflected. The electrons will vibrate briefly and then re-emit a light wave. Diffraction. Diffraction is the spreading of light as it passes through an object. 
It occurs when a light wave passes through a slit similar or even smaller than the size of its own wavelength. The narrower the slit, the more diffraction will occur. And last but not least, scattering. Scattering is the dispersion of light in many directions. It happens when light encounters a medium that contains many particles, like our atmosphere. This is what happens in the sky. The atmosphere is made up of a variety of molecules which scatter incoming sunlight. Shorter wavelengths, like blue and purple, are scattered much more than larger wavelengths, like orange and red. Purple scatters even more than blue light, but our eyes are much more receptive to the color blue than the color purple, so we see the sky as blue. Sunlight also contains more blue wavelengths than purple wavelengths, which contributes to the sky appearing more blue than purple. That's about all for today, so thanks for being here. I hope you learned something or refreshed your memory about something regarding the behavior of light. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I wish you all the best. Bye!